spotlight for everybody. Okay. So we're going to talk about how to sell to cut co-owners. So let's do a little bit of review from training. So you remember from training that there are two types of cut co-owners. There are those who own sets and those who own pieces. Again, people who own sets are people that have five plus pieces in some sort of block or a tray. People who have pieces are people who just have like one to four or five random pieces of cutco, but they just don't necessarily fit in a tray. They might have more than that too, but it's just kind of it's kind of sporadic pieces that didn't come in a prepackaged uh, situation. And so you're going to treat the demo slightly different for people who own sets versus people who own pieces. When it comes to people who own sets of cutco, um, oh, excuse me, when it comes to people who own pieces of cutco, you're going to do the same exact demo. Same exact demo as you would if they didn't own any cutco. So if somebody owns a trimmer and a cheese knife because they got them as a Christmas gift, or if their realtor gave them a trimmer and a spatula spreader or a spatula spreader and a pair of super shears, I'm just going to treat that like a demo where they don't have cutco necessarily. And I'm going to do a full presentation, show them the homemaker galley starter sets, and I'm going to sell them a homemaker galley starter set or five pieces. Good morning, Caitlin. Welcome. Glad you're on. And, and that's going to be a situation where um, you could still somebody a set, still sell somebody a set, even if they already just have a handful of pieces. Now, the, the other thing is if somebody already owns a set of cutco, let's say they own an all knife set or they own a galley set or a homemaker set or an ultimate or a signature, well, I'm still going to do the same demo, but I'm also going to treat the demo a little bit differently in the fact that anytime somebody owns a set of cutco, I'm not going to drop down using the normal set packages. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create the wish list or what we call the like list, same thing, in the cart. And I'm going to teach you how to close with that because there's some tricks and tips in the cart that you can use that are going to make your life so much easier when it comes to dropping down. It used to actually take weeks and weeks for our representatives to get good at dropping down with a big list of cutco. Now, before we get to that, one of the things that I do want to that I do want to share with you about showing people who already have Cutco. I, I want to give you a couple quick tips. Um, one of them, and, and we covered this briefly at the end of training for those of you who you know remember on the end of training when we taught you how to sell Cutco to people who already have it. Uh, I didn't get a whole chance to do this a ton, but when when somebody already owns Cutco, there's a couple of things that I'm going to do. Hopefully you can still hear me okay. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. Is it so clean? All right, beautiful. Uh, looked like it was lagging on my side. There's a couple of things that I'm going to do during the demo to get the customer stoked about the stuff that they already have. Uh, one of them is I always used to make my customers, I used to have them write a customer testimonial in the back of my recommendations notebook. Now, you don't have a recommendations notebook. We use the apps, way more efficient, it's way better. Um, but I used to have them hand write how much they love their Kako in the back of my notebook, like at the beginning of the appointment. Um, Mrs. Jones, you already have cut code. You love it. That's awesome. Hey, great. I'm actually compiling like a list of just like people who love their cut code. So uh, Mrs. Jones, would uh, would you be willing to just like write down what your favorite piece of cut code is and how long you have it? And, and I can show you my red, my red recommendations notebook that's still sitting on the shelf in my office. I've got a blind lady back there who's had her cut code for 25 years who wrote in there with a Sharpie since she can only see out of one corner of her eye out of her periphery. Um, like I asked her, I was like, Mrs. Jones, would you mind writing a cutco letter? And she was like, so like personable, even though she was blind that I forgot she was blind for a second. And I go to give her this like pen and paper and ask her to write in my notebook. And she's like, Jesse, I'm blind. I can't see this. And uh, so she goes and grabs a Sharpie and like out of the corner of her eye, writes how much she loves her cutco. She's had it for 25 years, took it in a divorce, underlined took. She freaking hated her ex-husband. She like ranted about that for five minutes. And she's like, I gave him every fork, spoon, pot, pan, bowl in that kitchen, Jesse. But I took my cut on knives. And I was like, rock on. Um, anyway, she bought a pocket knife for her best friend and got it engraved. It was super cool. So I've also got other ladies that, um, that write in my notebook, like trimmer is my favorite knife, best thing ever. Oh, I had one lady, my mother-in-law, before she was my mother-in-law, um, before I married her daughter, uh, she wrote in there like my husband bought new golf clubs because golfing is what I do. She's like, fine. So I went out and bought new kitchen knives because cooking is what I do. She's like, what could he say? She bought a galley set back in the day. It would have cost her like six, 700 bucks. And that six or 700 bucks, I've heard them talk about their early stages of their marriage. Like they were incredibly frugal people. So when her husband went out and dropped like, 
you know, five hundred plus dollars on a new set of clubs. She was like, "All right, you get clubs, I get knives." And she's had her cutco knives for like the last twenty five years. So, um, you get fun stories like that that you actually get to share with other customers. That was one of my favorite parts of my demo with my book. So we used to have these blue books that look like this. We would literally do story time for housewives. This is the way Uncle Jesse learned how to do appointments, because we would flip pages and read and tell them about the homemaker set. All the all the things that you see and recognize from the slides were originally paper at one point, right? So I would like I would like paste these things in sheet protectors stories from my customers. Now, you don't necessarily need to do that. You're in a virtual world and, it, and it's okay, you don't have to. But I would still ask people, what are your favorite pieces of cocktail? How long have you had it? Hey, do you mind writing me a customer testimonial email, Mrs. Jones, just for fun? And then I would share those stories with other customers. So one of the things you can do um, is you can steal those stories and share them with other people. So for example, I got this customer, if you guys aren't familiar with the salmon knife, um, cause you haven't been around long enough yet, the salmon knife, think of it like a bread slicer, but a really thin, it's kind of like our fisherman's solution, but like for the kitchen, it's a really flexible blade. I had a fisherman's solution somewhere here. Oh, it's over there. Anyway, um, I had this one customer, she had an ultimate set and I was sharpening her ultimate set cause I was sharp and certified. And I said, Hey, uh, Pat, what do you, her name is Pat and I Ben. I said, Hey Pat, what do you use the salmon knife for? Do you ever, do you make fish at all? And she's like, no, I don't. She's like, you want to know that's really good for though, Jesse? Costco muffins. And I was like, what? Because this is razor sharp, thin, straight edge blade. She And she did this. She went, yay. Cut through it, Costco muffins, no crumbs. And she made that sound effect, just no crumbs. So guess what I did every single time I ever talked about a salmon knife for the rest of my career with a customer? Oh, Mrs. Jones, you want to know what a lot of customers use the salmon knife for? It's good for, you know, really delicate meats, mahi-mahi, tuna, trout. Some people use it for watermelons. They get creative. And you know what? I have a lady, Mrs. Jones, Pat Nesbitt. She uses this for Costco muffins because you can just, no crumbs. I do that exact same. I've sold another seven, eight, nine, ten salmon knives in my career just because I share the Pat Nesbitt story. So sharing stories with your current customers of people who already have Cutco um, just adds a lot of credibility and it adds a lot of fun to your appointment. All right, that's a side note. Let's go back to talking about how to sell the Cutco owners. When I'm going through the names and uses, especially if customers have these, right? So I'm, if I'm thinking about somebody who's got an all knife set, I know an all knife set has a pairing knife. So I'm gonna say, hey, Mrs. Jones, this is the pairing knife. I'm still gonna walk them through the pairing knife. It has a long handle, making peeling and pairing comfortable. Oh, Mrs. Jones, you have one of these, don't you? Cool, what do you use your pairing knife for? And they go, oh, I use that all the time on peaches, pears, nectarines, and strawberries. Oh, awesome, Mrs. Jones, perfect. Guess what I'm telling my next customer? Like, I'm going to steal that and I'm going to tell my next customer exactly that. Oh, Sally, you know, uh, you know, the neighbor down the road, like Susie, right? Yeah, she actually loves this pairing knife. She's had it for 20 years and she uses it for peaches, pears, nectarines, and strawberries. And that customer goes, oh, Sally has it. Well, that makes sense. That builds customer credibility with future appointments. Anyway, by asking your customers as well, what do you use your current cutco pieces for? You're doing two things. You're reselling them on their cutco that they already have and that it was a good investment and that it makes sense that they got it. And you're stealing stories for the future. And you're also looking for opportunities to help them use their cutco in maybe ways that they're not using it right now. I've told the spatula spreader thing in training and some of you might remember this, but I can't tell you how many times in my life I've met somebody who has a homemaker galley starter set who has a spatula spreader and I get to the spatula spreader in the script and I say, hey, Mrs. Jones, this spatula spreader is amazing. I'm sure you know. Um, what do you use your spatula spreader for? And they look at it and they go, well, I, I, I don't know really what that's used for. That one just kind of sits in the block. And it makes me cry. Like, I just want to like shed tears of like sadness and sorrow because it's like they missed out for 25 years of owning that homemaker on having the awesomeness of the super spreader, right, Zach, every single morning of the super spatula spreader every single morning with their bagels, right? And so, oh, Miss Jones, you don't know what that one's used for? Let me tell you, this one's really good for casseroles, anything that you would bake, uh, lasagna sandwiches, cake, it's also good for peanut butter and jelly. And then I go off on that piece and then... And then they're like, they hold their spatula spreader with a new reverence because they're like, oh my gosh, didn't know what that was used for. All right, so that's a couple of tips. Now, again, when you're showing somebody who already owns a set of Kako, you're going to do the same exact demo until you get to this part right here, which is the summary. And at the summary, what you're going to do is you're going to go up to the Kako owners tab. 
And you're going to have the customer at that point take out a, every piece of cutco they already own and snap you a picture. In fact, I'd probably have them do that at the very beginning of the demo. Anytime somebody owns cutco I want a picture in my hands of everything that they have. When I used to do in-home appointments with people who own cutco or sharpening appointments, like I'd say, all right, Mrs. Jones, I'm going to sharpen your cutco but part of my job as your rep is to also make sure that everything else that you have is in good shape and working condition. And, and if it needs service, I can help you with that. So let's grab that set of knives and the customer would usually grab their set of knives. And this is like in a sharpening world. But then I would like go rummaging through her drawers uninvited looking for extra cutco. I'd be like, Mrs. Jones, is there more cutco in here as I'm like pulling open the drawer? And some of you might be like, oh my gosh, that sounds so intrusive. It actually just builds a lot of rapport. I'd point at the drawers, is there cutco in here? And she'd, oh, there might be some. And then we'd look through there and then I would like, I, I know what cutco handles look like. So I'm like, pulling table knives out of spots she forgot. I'm checking peelers, grabbing can openers. Um, but I want to make sure, whether it's a virtual world or in person, that I know every single piece of cutco that she already has. Because I don't want to try to sell her a peeler if she's already got a peeler. It is the most appealing piece of cutco that we make. And a lot of people get two or three or four. But, you know, I want to make sure that I know what she has. So I'm having them in a virtual world text me every single, like a picture of every single piece of cutco that they have laid out. Because it's going to do two things for me. It's going to do, uh, it's going to make my life a lot easier when it comes to an upgrade situation. And sometimes customers don't know exactly what they have. So they'll say that they have a homemaker, but they actually have a galley. Or maybe they have a homemaker, but they have a modified homemaker from Costco. And so they say they got the homemaker set, but then they're like, oh, what, what, what are these pieces? I, I don't have those pieces. And I'm kind of confused. Or maybe they actually have an ultimate set and I thought they had a signature set or something. So, um, and I'm also looking for pieces in the set that are damaged or that I can see visibly need sharpened. Sometimes you can see the teeth on the knife are just like nubbed. They're just like gone because somebody's used a trimmer for 25 years for everything. And like you could like you could put the trimmer up to your neck and not worry about, you know, cutting yourself on your hand or anything like that. It's just that dull. So I can see a lot of times those things. And in that case, I'm going to help the customer go to cutco.com forward slash sharpening. And I can walk them through this on the phone, how to send their stuff back to get it sharpened. So that that way they can send it back, get it sharpened and uh, get it taken care of. So, oh wow, there's a contest for a slicer right now. So I'm having them take a picture of everything they already own. And then here's what I'm saying. I'm saying, Mrs. Jones, since you already own Kako, it doesn't make sense to buy a full set usually. I say usually because I have sold a full galley set to somebody who already owns an ultimate set. Because I put the galley set in the trailer. Zach Young sold a, a brand new homemaker set to somebody who owns a galley set because uh, the customers are like, well, I like the extra pieces in the homemaker. And he's like, and they're like, we want to get that. And he's like, well, you could upgrade or do you have anybody coming up, you know, and you have, do you have any kids you'd want to give this galley set to? And the customer goes, oh, that's a great idea. I'll just give the galley set to my kids and buy a new homemaker. So there are situations where that does happen. Phil, I remember he sold one time a, uh, an order to a customer where they had a classic signature set, uh, or it was a classic homemaker. It was a classic homemaker, but he's sitting down in their kitchen and noticed they just redone everything in white. So they just redone everything in white and he's seen this classic homemaker set on the counter and he's like, Mrs. Jones, I, I just got to say, and this is, you know, Phil Bolander, your division manager. He's like, I just got to say, I think a white signature set would look beautiful here. Um, and they're like, yeah, but you know, we already have this set. We, do, we have thought about switching colors. But we're just not sure what we would do. And he looks over outside and he sees a camper out there and he's like, you guys use the camper at all? And the wife's like, oh yeah, my husband travels all the time. In fact, it drives me bananas. He steals half the knives out of the block and puts them in the camper and he's gone for weeks at a time. So what if you just bought a brand new white signature set and you just throw the, the homemaker set in the camper? And she's like, that's amazing. So we sold him a brand new signature set. So don't underestimate situations like that. But normally people are just adding stuff to their collection. Hope you guys are taking notes like crazy because I'm just like dumping everything that Jesse knows about selling cutco to cutco owners on you in like 29 minutes. Um, I right, don't do this often. So it says most customers, uh, since you already own Kako, it doesn't make sense to buy a full set. Most customers either upgrade to their favorite set or pick out a few pieces to supplement what they already own. Either way, if you decide to add more Kako to your collection, it'll be able to give you the best deal possible. So we're going to start by making the wish list. 
Now, these aren't necessarily things you're going to buy today, but as you keep, but as your rep, we'll be able to keep track of what you like for future reference. So ladies and gentlemen, I would, if I were you for the rest of your career, I would never call this a wish list. If you want to write down a wish list in your notes and then put an X through it and write down like list. Like list, that slight shift in verbiage helps us build the list. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. Wish is a little bit more things that I wish for a little bit more specific. Things that I like are pretty numerous. Nobody see the difference there? So if we make a wish list, things that they wish they had in their kitchen, yeah, that's that there's some like specific things in there. It's a little bit smaller, a little bit more limiting. But if I say, hey, Ms. Jones, what would you like to have in your kitchen? They're like, well, I'd like to have everything. Great. Now we're talking. So these aren't necessarily things you're going to buy today, but as your rep, we'll be able to keep track of what you like for future reference. Basically, if Cutco were for free, what would you add to your set? Now, check this out. This is where we go to the gifts and accessories tab. And you'll notice in the gifts and accessories tab that that paragraph actually drops us off right here. So this is where we just switch tabs and we just keep reading. So basically, as we go through here, Mrs. Jones, if Cutco were for free, just tell me what you'd add to your set. Also, of course, the more you buy, the more you save. So don't be afraid of adding something because it may end up coming for free on your order anyway. If we get to a section where you have no interest at all, just tell me to skip it. No problem. And then you're going to write in your notebook, Mrs. Jones, not wish list, but a what? A like list. This is anything you like, Mrs. Jones. And the fact, the way that I tell Mrs. Jones about this is I say, hey, Mrs. Jones, this is, we're going to make a like list. Anything you can see yourself using in the next 10 what I always say. I say in the next 10 days, weeks, months, years, or decades. The decades is kind of a joke since most customers aren't going to live for another 100 years beyond their current age, but um, they get the idea. So, Mrs. Jones, anything you could possibly see yourself using in the next 10 minutes, days, weeks, hours, years, or decades? And you know, the customer's like, all right, I get it. And then you're going to have the customer write down the like list on their side, and then you're going to go to the specialty knives. Okay. At this point, you're going to ask two questions. You're going to walk them through everything. And you're going to ask, you're going to pitch every piece and you're going to say, can you see yourself using that? How many? Now, you've got, what's cool about this, we didn't used to have this in your original virtual manual. And this for sure wasn't in like my, um, in my paper manual when I first started back in 2015, is you've got a micro script for every single piece here in the ultimate set. And those are the pieces that you're showing them. Nobody notice this? This slide right here that you're seeing that they're looking at is every is all the ultimate pieces. So when you're asking them, Mrs. Jones, can you see yourself using a hearty slicer? Great. Can you see yourself using a petite santoku? Awesome. Can you see yourself using a cheese knife? If they say yes to most of these pieces, they're actually a prime candidate for an ultimate upgrade. For our, old, for our upgrade program. In fact, write those two words down in parentheses, upgrade program. If you want to sell a lot of upgrades, who thinks it'd be cool to like go around and upgrade people to the next biggest set? Like anybody that's in an all knife set, you sell them the rest of the stuff from the homemaker set. So the way you do that, by the way, if somebody has a starter set, when you're walking them through the demo of the homemaker pieces and they already own a smaller set than a homemaker, you're asking them, hey, Mrs. Jones, you already have that pairing knife. Oh, but you know what, Mrs. Jones, you actually don't have that turning fork. Can you see yourself using the turning fork? Awesome. And you're making a list of things that they could possibly see themselves using. And then all they got to do is you got to find a storage option for them and then you can upgrade them. In fact, most of my sales from my career were to Cutco owners because I do a lot of sharpening appointments and I just run around upgrading people to like homemakers and signatures and ultimate sets because they should have flipped and bought a homemaker set the first time, but their representative who sold them a set was too wimpy to just tell them that they should have got the homemaker set. And so they ended up buying three pieces or a starter set instead. So, and a lot of our CSPs, Faith will tell you the same thing. Zach will tell you the same thing that they just, they do appointments with people all day long that should have bought a homemaker set the first time. Um, and they just end up finishing the job. All right, so hang on, let me go in here. All right, got it, thank you, Cutco. I gotta go to my shopping cart and I'm obviously not on a wicked fast internet connection, but we're doing what we can. All right, so here's what we've got. Let's say that we are going through, so 
you're going to go through all the rest of the gifts and accessories and you're going to make a list of stuff that they want. They could add more table knives. Uh, it might be a wine opener, might be an entertainer pack, might be all sorts of things. So as we go through here, in fact, let me just do this. Um, as we go through here, let's pretend, let's make a list of stuff that might be reminiscent of somebody that owns, let's say they own a galley set. So maybe they want a butcher knife because they can see themselves using a butcher knife. And then you walk them through some of the other pieces and they like the seven inch Santoku. In fact, why don't you guys unmute yourselves and tell me some pieces that a Cutco owner might want to add to their collection. Maybe they don't have shears yet, or maybe they want another pair. Help me out here. What about a boning knife, because those are super cool. And then yeah, cleaver. Cleaver, sure. Yeah, you might have a customer who wants a cleaver. We'll do cleaver without the sheath. And then you know what? Uh, what else do we got? We maybe they want some table knives. So we're gonna put table knives. Maybe they have a galley plus six set, but they you know they want at least four more table knives. We can add table knives to the cart. Put quantity of four. You know what? Actually, I know where I'm going with this. So I'm gonna delete the cleaver the way it is. I'm gonna add the cleaver with the sheet. And cart. So if they've got a galley set, and then we go in here and we go, we're gonna go cheese knife. And you know what? Maybe they also want a they want the master carving set. So that means we got to give them the nine-inch carver and the carving fork. All right, we got all these pieces. You know what? Maybe they also want flatware. And this is what your wish list should look where it should look like, by the way. What how come that doesn't come up? Flatware. What are you guys calling the cutco? Um let's go back here, back one more time. Flatware. Yeah, that's what it's called. All right. Maybe they want to add a flatware chest to the set. And you know what? And then with all of this, actually, they could probably use a signature block. All right. So let, let me give you my philosophy on making the wish list. I want you to write down the higher you start, the higher you finish. The higher you start, the higher you finish. What that means is that the bigger list that we start with initially, the bigger order we're going to end up with overall. Because sometimes it actually has nothing to do with the budget has everything to do with how many times a customer has to say no before they feel comfortable saying yes. So what I mean by that is you got some customers that'll say yes first time, you sell them homemakers and signatures and ultimate sets and it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, you got some customers though that are four, five or six no's. And so you have to show them multiple options until you get down, you know, until they've said no four, five, six, seven, maybe even eight times. And uh, then they finally feel comfortable saying yes. So if I start with like a smaller list, like a $500 wish like list, excuse me, caught myself there. If I start with a $500 like list, it's going to be a situation where as we trim that down, I'm not going to have a whole lot of options. Out of a $500 list, that's like five or six pieces. I can only do so much with that. However, if I start with a three, an almost $4,000 list, because this is just stuff that Mrs. Jones can say that she likes, now this gives us room to drop down. Now here's where you, here's what you do with this, by the way. We've got a signature upgrade pretty much here from a, uh, a galley set. They've gone through all the pieces that they like, pieces that they would use. They, uh, they want the, the flatware and we didn't even get into the hunting knife. So honestly, if, I, if I'm showing Kako to somebody who already has Kako, if my list isn't at least over a thousand bucks, I did a bad job. If I did two to three thousand dollars, I'm in a good ballpark. If my list is over four thousand dollars for stuff that they like, if I can get them to say, "Yeah, I could see myself using that in the next ten minutes, days, years, weeks, decades, whatever," um, then uh, then I'm in a good place. So once you get to this spot, Emma, this is a really important spot, Zachary, because once you get this big old list, you could say, "Hey, Mrs. Jones, do you want to buy all that? It's thirty-eight eighty-six, or you know, sorry, thirty-one forty-five is what the customer would pay." 
And the customer would be like, yeah, all that's nice, but I really just want to buy uh, the shears. And then as a new rep, you go, cool. And then you sell them the super shears and we go from a $4,000 list to $112, $125 pair of super shears. By the way, there's no special on the super shears as they sit. So they're like, oh, but I got to pay full price for them. Yeah, probably not. And you have a no sell. So the idea here is that you want to trim this list down just like you would be dropping down with our normal package options. And so, yeah, with our normal package options. So here's the way you do this. There's a couple of phrases you want to use that, that make this easy. First of all, let, let me show you how to make it make stuff for free. In the top of your cart, there is a bonus point slider. My recommendation is that you always keep that bonus point slider somewhere between 20 to 25 percent bonus. If on occasion you need to use more than that, call your manager. Um, we can kind of give you some pointers. I'm not, I wouldn't try to give 33% bonus all the time. That's really hard on your CPO and not necessary. Um, you sometimes you can actually give a little bit too good of a deal to customers, but that's another conversation philosophy for another day. So I say 20 to 25. So I, I'm going to put mine at 25. I'm going to hit update. I'm going to go back to my cart and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to hit order advisor. Now, order advisor tells me what I can give for free on an order. Yeah, so this is really easy. Yeah, so write that down in case you didn't know this. Order advisor tells you what you can give for free on an order. Now, you've got two locations you can get free stuff from. You can give it from the catalog, which, by the way, that's helpful because if you've got a homemaker in the cart, you can go from catalog and it'll tell you anything from the catalog you can give for free with that, with that homemaker set. We're, we already had the customer create a like list. Everything that they like that Cucko makes is already in the cart. So we're going to go from cart. And then it tells us the best things to bonus to give the customer the best deal, but also to maintain our CPO. And we could talk about that another day. But I'm going to go ahead and just start bonusing things until I hit my limits. I'm going to bonus the table knives, going to bonus the super shears, going to bonus the cheese knife, going to bonus the boning knife. We're going to bonus the butcher knife. Um, we still got some more room. We're going to bonus the carving fork. Where are we at right now? We're at 19 bonus points. We're going to keep or 19, 19%. We're going to keep going. You know why? Because if I give a customer a rad deal, there we go. Uh, they might just buy the biggest option. Let's check this out. We've hit our 23% bonus limit. There's nothing else that allows us to give 25. So here's the way I present this now to the customer. So we can see what the value is, what customer pays, and we can see what our CPO is. So you know, here's the way I would say this. So before I give the customers any prices, I like to do what's called the emotional roller coaster close. So I say, hey, Mrs. Jones, if you could go back all those years ago, and um, if you could go back all those years ago, you bought Cutco 25 years ago, and buy Cutco all over again, knowing the value it's brought to your life, would you do it? If you could go back all those years ago and buy a wall again, knowing the value is brought to your life, would you do it? And they think for a second, they're like, totally. Yeah, Cutco has been amazing for the last 10, 15, 27 years, whatever. Um, definitely we'd go back and buy it again. Makes sense. Awesome. Hey, Mrs. Jones, whether it's the first time somebody's buying Cutco or the hundredth time, what I've noticed over the years, or you can just say what, what customers go through, Mrs. Jones, they go through what I like to call the emotional roller coaster. Because there's this roller coaster of what do we have versus what do we need versus what can we afford versus what do we want. It's actually what do we want versus what do we need versus what we can afford. And I got to tell you, Ms. Jones, anytime anybody buys Cutco, they always end up in the same place. And that's happy customer land. It's a sweet little joke. It's not really even a joke. It's just kind of a, it's a reassurance. And then what I do, Jennifer, is I say, hey, Mrs. Jones, so what we've got here is your like list. These are all the things you could see yourself using in the kitchen normally the value on all of that, and you've got that on your side, Mrs. Jones, we've got your signature upgrade and we've got your, uh, you know, your signature block and, um, and all, all of, uh, and, and the flatware chest. Normally the value for all that, by the way, is 38.86. Um, if you were to, if you were to price that all out, Mrs. Jones, I'm actually running my best specials today. And this is, this is pretty ridiculous because I'm in a really big contest right now, or because I'm trying to win a scholarship or, um, Zach, I'm, I'm just having the, I'm trying to have the biggest week ever. What I can do is I can drop, I can drop that price down to 2298, which by the way, Mrs. Jones, um, we're giving you over, uh, $847 worth of free stuff. If you get it today. And actually it's actually more than that. 
um, because of the way the flatware chest discount sits. But what we've done, Ms. Jones, is I've actually dropped off $847 worth of free stuff or giving you $847 worth of free stuff or dropped $847 off the price of stuff that I'm getting for you that I'm, I'm, I'm buying for you, Mrs. Jones. And so that means that your price would be $22.98. So write that down, Mrs. Jones. And on the five pay, that's only $4.62, which is like an extra, grow to car, extra, grow, extra cart of groceries from Costco. It's like 120 bucks a week, Mrs. Jones, for five months. And then you never have to buy these knives ever again. And your kitchen's pretty much outfitted. How does that sound? That's a pretty awesome deal, right? Here's the thing. My objective is to build a list big enough, Aurora, that I know that there's going to need to be some things that need to be cut. Meaning, if the customer is like, well, the flatware looks like looks nice. I'm like, can you see yourself using that? They're like, yeah, it's not a priority, but we like it. Okay, great. They're going to say no to this first option probably, but guess what I'm going to cut right away? I'm going to go here, and, and this is how you drop down with a list, by the way. And this is probably the most important part of this entire workshop that I'm running. So I'm going to go through this quickly, and I'll let you guys go because I know we're over. What I'm going to say is I'm going to say, hey, Mrs. Jones, of your list, what one to three pieces are not a priority? What well, one to three items are not a priority? Or two to three? And I've got a list of how many pieces are in here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Um, by the way, did I? Yeah, I got 14 of those. Um, so th that's a situation where um, I've got like 10 or 12 pieces in here. Well, two or three pieces are not a priority. Well, she'd be like, well, you know what? The flatware is not a priority for me today. Great, Mrs. Jones, let me, let me hold off. Let me, let me show you what it'd be now. Because now what we've got is we've just got a, uh, a regular like signature set upgrade from a galley set. I can show you another feature in the cart, by the way, that blow your mind um, on how to do upgrades. And by the way, if you're ever like not sure what fits in a block, call your manager. Manager can help you out with this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, all right, Ms. Jones, let me run the deal for you on that one and see what we can do. All right, I'm going to go back from cart. I'm just going to go ahead and start bonusing stuff until I can't bonus stuff no more. I've got my bonus limit set. All right, perfect. So I go back to the customer and I say, hey, Mr. Jones, so here's what we've got. We took off the, the flatware since that's not a priority for you today. Now, what we've got in the cart, your upgrade to your signature set, that normally would be like value-wise retails at $1,570. But what I can do is I can actually drop that down Um. $408 by giving you some of your list for free. So I'm actually just, I'm buying you uh, $408 worth of stuff. And you can save that by the way, because you're taking a hit on your commission to give them free stuff. So Mrs. Jones, then your set comes out to be 1162 for your upgrade. And by the way, on the five pay, so go ahead and write that down. That's only 234. Does everybody see the massive drop that we just had right here? We went from them possibly paying 460 bucks on a five pay and buying over $2,600 worth of stuff. Drop the flatware set. Now we're at 1162 and 234. That seems like cake. Like that perspective seems easy. And then you know what? And you still have a 789 CPO order. They got a freaking signature set upgrade and you're, you're rocking and rolling because you're almost at a grand on the week, right? And if they are out there like, well, you know what? That's still a little bit too much. Well, hey, no worries, Mrs. Jones. What, what two or three pieces aren't a priority for you? Are the, is the cleaver a priority for you? No, cleaver's not a priority for you. Great, let's go ahead and delete that. And let's go ahead and unbonus the rest of these things one more time, Mrs. Jones also. Um, and this is how I'm dropping down with them, right? Is I'm, I'm asking what couple pieces we're trimming the list down a little bit as we go. Mrs. Jones, my job is just to show you all the options. I just wanna make sure you get the best deal. Uh, what else is not a priority? Is the, uh, actually, uh, is the butcher knife? Oh, you know what? You probably don't know if you'd use the boning knife. All right, cool. Well, let's let's go ahead and delete that. Same thing. You go to order advisor. We go from cart. Bonus what we can bonus. Awesome. So here's what we've got, Mrs. Jones. Normally, your uh, the retail value of what we've got right here is twelve thirty one. But what I can do is I can take uh 309 dollars off the order if you get it today that brings it down to 180 or that brings it down to 922 so write that down mrs jones that'd be 922 or 186 on a five pay 
and you never have to buy these knives ever again and uh, you're good to go how does that sound look that's still a 600 dollars order that's still almost twice our average order you know one and a half times our average order 186 bucks on a five pay seems like nothing and we're in three digits instead of four i could sell these seven eight nine hundred dollar order lists lists all day long as a representative because the other thing that you got to understand sometimes when you're a brand new rep is we impose our own financial insecurities on our customers Meaning that you might think that $3,000 dropping something on the kitchen is a hell of a big deal. And that first like list that we made might've been like, oh my gosh, who would ever buy that? I know people that do. People do it all the time. Um, but even if they can't get that today, once I'm dropping down to like a $1,500 or a $900 list and oh yeah, and then wait, what do I do? I keep trimming it down till we get to seven and then five and then four. And even if I sell them three or four knives, we were looking at $3,000. By the time they spend $400 on some knives on a five pay and it's 80 bucks, it's like, they're like, all right, I guess I'll just get the small option. And you're still selling a $400 order. Does everybody catch that? So it's important to think bigger about your orders. Your order size will actually be limited by the size of what you think is by your own personal belief. So if you think that it's a big deal for somebody to buy that much, you're probably not going to sell at that option. But if you understand often, but if you understand that people spend this kind of money on their kitchens, their homes, and their, their gardens and their backyards and their garages all the time. Yeah, it becomes less of a, it, it, like you just, you can't impose or let your beliefs limit how much the customers can buy. All right, so that's what I got for you. Does that help on selling to cut co-owners? Okay, sounds good. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry, we're nine minutes over, 11 minutes over. Have a great day. Book up more demos. See ya.